Jonathan Ogden, the first Baltimore Raven draft in the 1996 NFL draft, man. So early, he didn't even have a jersey yet, man. Inducted. First Baltimore Raven in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, man. Man, he's living in the Hall of Fame, man. Straight up. Ozzy presented the uh, bus to him, man. I'm telling you, he was elated. You know, he kept his demeanor in a sense where he wasn't crying. You know, he was just calm but outspoken, man. Definitely a great speech, man. Great speech. Contrary to what people want to believe, he was not the first pick. Again, or Ray Lewis was not the first pick. He was the first pick in the 1996 NFL draft. A lot of people think Ray Lewis was. He was. Now, of course, Ray Lewis, the concrete block, just like Jonathan Ogden, they were the foundations of this Baltimore team. Jonathan Ogden, multiple Pro Bowls, multiple awards, Super Bowl 35 champion, Super Bowl 47 honorary champion. He got the ring, man. I mean, this guy definitely, you know, we couldn't have built the franchise without him, you know. Wasn't a popular pick, like Ozzy said, but it was a pick that made a difference. You know, he thinks the high school coaches, teammates, college, uh, USC, uh, UCLA, the Baltimore Ravens, the late Art Modell. Mark, man, look, you're watching this man from heaven. We promise you, bro, you're going to get in there soon, man. You're going to get in there. No matter what we got to do, you got to get in there, and you're going to get in there, bro. Um, he thought, you know, he thinks Art Modell, um, Brian Billick, Steve Pichotti, um, the teammates he played with, um, City of Baltimore and the fans. The Ravens fans were right there in the force, and I loved it. I loved it. So, Jonathan, man, congratulations on reaching football's ultimate heaven, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And if I ever visit Canton, I promise um, I'll pay you know my respects to you there. Um, you know, and as you, as you, you know, you're you're honored in there, bro, for life, man, and uh, even afterwards. So, big shout out to Jonathan Ogden, first Baltimore Raven inducting the Pro Football uh, for Pro Football Hall of Fame, but definitely won't be the last one. Definitely won't be the last one. You know, a couple years down the road, several years down the road, man, I can see him. Boom, boom, boom. Um, anyway, preseason football kicks off today, Cowboys Dolphins. You know, I'm not really too excited about it. Everybody's like, oh, football's bad. If, to me, preseason's always been just a big live televised practice. It's always been. Um, I'm not too big on it. I've never been, on, been big on four preseason games, but it's good to see football. Just not very excited. Um, I'll get my excitement going week one, the week before September 5th, when we're about to go against uh, the old retiree Peyton Manning and those Denver Donkeys. That's when I'm going to get excited for football. Um, we'll talk about the Buccaneers game, Ravens-Buccaneers, probably Wednesday or Thursday. We'll talk about it briefly. It's the first time the Ravens have played the Buccaneers um, in the preseason. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Falcons game. It's always interesting. Ravens-Falcons always interested in the preseason. We'll talk about the Rams game. And the Panthers game, that's the third preseason game, 22nd. Um, should be a little more interesting than when the starters play, but, you know, you, you got to pay attention to the secondary and third string guys. I mean, they, those guys can come in at any moment and make a difference in your season. Well, from Tyrod Taylor to Chad Henney, um, from Juice to Vontae Lee, you know, it, 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 you always got to pay attention, but I'm just going to jump for joy. I mean, for me, football is it's, it's good to see it back on the field, but it ain't officially back until the 5th of September when the Ravens take on the Broncos. And we... Uh, we got to talk about uh, the, the roster. The Ravens um, released their death chart, their breakdown, a, a pre-breakdown of the death chart. Um, nothing's official, and it's probably most likely going to change. Um, of course, they have Joe quarterback. It's obvious. Torrey Jacoby, number one and number two, um, with uh, Tannen Dawson and uh, Deontay Thompson behind them. Vontae's resigned, so Juice is behind him. They could use Juice you know, more of a tight end this year, um, more of maybe a kind of a you know, receiving threat when they want to. Um, Ray Rice, Bernard Pierce, if they're utilized right, they're going to make a hell of a run in tandem. The backfield, um, it's Ladarius Webb um, at uh, left cornerback. Right cornerback is uh, Corey Graham, and I can't wait to see that tandem right there. They stay healthy. It's going to be crazy. Um, James Indigo, and uh, then at uh, free safety, um, Michael Hoff. And I like Michael Hoff, vertical guy. Uh, versatile guy. He can play a lot of positions in the back. He can read the quarterbacks. He's really well at getting the ball out the air. Uh, you know, making a quarterback stress out. Putting it, so I like him. Kind of reminds me of what I've read. So when he picked him up for me with the Oakland Raiders, man, I was really happy. And I can't wait to see Matt L. Maybe he'll get some playing time this year. Um, left tackle, of course, Bryant McKinney. Um, left guard is Clay Ozmley. Um Center is Geno, which we know. Um, right guard is uh, Marshall, Marshall Yonda. And right tackle is Michael Orr, and I like that. I th you know, Michael Orr's always kind of reminded me uh, of a younger Jonathan Ogden. You know, not somebody that's, that's going to, you know, run their mouth on the field 24-7. They, they can be outspoken when they want to be, but he's a quiet guy, gets a job done, gets a job done right. And if Michael Orr continues to improve, 
he'll be there one day. Um, hell, I mean, Click ultimately, you know, the second year he's already talking Pro Bowl, so <laughs> keep keep it up, bro. Um, on the defense, um, defensive tackles Arthur Jones behind him, Brandon Williams, and I like that combo. You know, Arthur Jones, Brandon Williams, they kind of I never really looked at it this way, but they kind of remind me of each other. They're both big guys, they're both physical, they both have you know outspoken minds. Um, I use that word outspoken a lot, you know, meaning they they can they can talk when they want to. They got that leadership role in their voice, and um, especially with the young Brandon Williams. So that's going to be a good combination. Maybe Brandon can get some playing time as well. I'm um, putting him maybe in the more of uh, some inside roles this year, which will get Terrence Cody some playing time maybe um, if he doesn't get a starting job. And he wants to get back to being Mount Cody. He wants to prove himself. And he can. He just needs to step it up. You know, Nobody's saying he's going to lose a starting job. But last year, you remember, he did. Um, at a uh, defensive end is Chris Chanty. I um, love that. Big mouth in New York and leadership mouth, not a big mouth in a bad way. I love the hands, love the footwork. You know, he's got some good burst of speed on the edges, man. I like him. Definitely could help the team out. Um, we got on the rush linebackers, Terrell Suggs. It's obvious. You know, he's talking about playing the best season of his career, and I think he can do it. Like him, he can. Um, now, if you're not familiar with these terms, go look them up. They're not very hard to you know understand. Three, four, four, three. Kind of mean the same thing um, with these terms, a little differently though. We got the Will linebacker, which is the weak side linebacker. Um, that's going to Jamil McLean, and behind him, I believe it's uh, Josh Barnes, I think. Um, I like Jamil because he has a chance again, just like Paul Kruger, just like Jared Johnson. A lot of Ravens fans, a lot of fans, a lot of you know analysts, they criticize him. You know, can he really step up or lose his job, go to another city and try? I think Jamil has a lot of possibilities here in Baltimore. A lot of possibilities on a leadership role. A lot of possibilities on the playing field. And if he goes, you know, to that, that weakness side, I, I think he really needs to prove himself big time. I mean, this is the side where you're going to get a lot of pass coverage, and you have to move your feet a lot. You got to pay attention. You know, you're not the most aggressive, you know, big linebacker, but you're the kind of guy that they're going to call on a lot. Um, of course, the middle linebacker, uh, I believe they're talking Daryl Smith, and behind him, um, McKellen, which I like. Daryl Smith came from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Again, he is a leader. This will be the guy calling the audibles, calling the plays, kind of the quarterback. Kind of reminds you of somebody, doesn't it? Kind of the quarterback of the uh, defense. Um, this is the kind of guy that's going to be asked to blitz a lot, you know, go around the edges a lot, could be asked in pass coverage a lot. So this is kind of the, the multitasking kind of guy. And Daryl Smith in Jacksonville, he did a lot of that. So I think he'll come into Baltimore, um, work alongside McClellan. They get something going there, a little tandem to mess with when, uh, when they want to switch out. Um, but Daryl Smith right now seems to be getting that job, if it goes right. You never know. Because um, McClellan was right on his heels. Um, and then the same linebacker, which is the strong side linebacker. This is the kind of guy that, uh, you know, you can substitute them a lot for defensive backs, but more than likely, more of the time, these are going to you know, be the guys that are going to be in. Uh, on being on the strong side, of course, you're on the side of the tight ends. So these guys, obviously, are going to be covering the tight ends. A lot of work there. That takes a lot of aggression. It takes a lot of work. It's a big guy um, that has the ability to blitz, stop the run, up the middle, around the edges, the kind of guy that you know you could really put in different positions and he could work out. And I really think that um, I believe it's between Courtney Upshaw and Elvis Dumerville. I think Elvis will get it. Um, Courtney, you know, he, he came out and said, "Hey, I want to improve myself this year. I want to be that rush the passer type player. I want to be able to, you know, close up in coverage. I want to be able to tackle well." And I think that let Elvis get some turn playing, you know, in Baltimore. First, you know, play with Denver, get him some time in Baltimore. Maybe let Courtney come in and see what he can do. I, it, it'll be interesting to see that. This could change around. You know, you could put Jamil at the middle linebacker. I think he has the possibility of taking over Ray Lowe's, you know, leadership role. Um, you can put maybe Brandon Williams in the spot of, you know, maybe Kaloni Nada. You know, there's a, there's a lot of things you could do with this defense. It's, it's one of these multitasking players, a lot of them are, that have leadership roles and have the kind of roles where if they improve, they're automatically – in my opinion, all stars. I mean, not Pro Bowlers, not Super Bowl champions, but all stars. And I'm talking some of the rookies. I can't wait to see Arthur Brown. Maybe he gets some playing time this year. Um, it's going to be really interesting. But that's the, the the breakdown. It's not official yet. And I'm just coming at this. Some of this stuff might be wrong, but it's coming out of my head. I just seen it yesterday. Um, I've been watching in camp, and uh, the first practice, public practice, will be at MT Bank Stadium for our area in Baltimore, um, down the road this way. And that'll be coming up on the um, 11th. So I'll be down here, of course, covering that. And, and uh, spending tons of money on very expensive drinks and food, but you can't leave bowl more with that. The good old fashioned chicken tenders and the, the ten dollar chicken tenders and <laughs> drinks. So that's always that's always fun to, to waste money on. And of course, merchandise and crap like that. But anyway, I can't wait. I'll be there doing some fun filming and um 
and uh, make sure I don't leave my camera this time. I mean, uh, I left my camera during the uh, the Super Bowl uh, parade, and wasn't very happy afterwards. The kind of once in, maybe once in a lifetime thing I kind of messed up on. But anyway, one more thing: message to Steel Legends. Steel Legends haven't mentioned your name, man. Bengals fans, man, y'all coming along great. Can we trash talk with your Browns fans? I don't know where the hell you guys are at, but Steelers fans, especially Steel Legends, I send a little comment you make. L listen to me. We know why you're hiding your fat ass face, man. When you gain all that weight back, you know you're hiding your fat ass face. You won't make a fucking video like a man, man. Okay, straight up. Look at me. Your team, so-called domination. Your team, so-called domination of the AFC North or any team, for that matter, is over, bro. Baltimore, black and purple, baby. We got this division, and we're going to get it for a third time this year. Talk about the oh, Ray Lewis laughed and every laugh, man. We heard it a thousand fucking times. And you know what? We're ready to prove it week one and beyond and put your team in the basement. That garbage ass franchise is rebuilding. And we're talking about Big Ben's back, man. Let me look. That rapist ass quarterback. I'm going to tell you this right now. Okay, he's going to get KO'd the fuck out again. I don't want to see a player get injured, but I know for a fact he's going to come in here, run his fucking mouth about, you know, I'll take a serious show Super Bowl. He's going to KO the fuck out. I hope it's by us. He's going to get KO'd the fuck out just like your team. And you're back from week one, man. You're, you're back week one, starting the whole season over again. I'm telling you, stop wishing for that fucking six Super Bowl because that motherfucker ain't gonna come until you're about 75 years old. And I'm gonna tell you if that, okay? Fuck your piece of shit defense, your piece of shit offense, okay? It's fall apart, bro. This ain't your Super Bowl over the Cardinals team, man. I mean that team scared me. I mean it scared me up to a couple years, man. Even when Big Ben was playing last year, just I mean I was in Pittsburgh watching it, you know. Um, he wasn't there, but I was in big, uh, you know, Pittsburgh watching. I wasn't even that frightened, man. It doesn't, it, 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 it don't scare me, man. You know, it does not scare me. Of course, my ace is going to have to do with Denver Donkeys and those Donkey fans out there talking about their offense, man. We got the most elite offense, man. I'm, I'm saying San Francisco 49ers, man. You guys are a good football team, but everybody shouldn't be talking shit, man. I'm talking Super Bowl. I'm talking about uh, week one, man. You motherfuckers talking about Super Bowl and, uh, it's going to be the Denver Broncos and 49ers, man. Talk here about that stupid shit. Talk here about the Broncos, man. That old age retiring, man. Look, Joe's going to have five before this motherfucker gets two. And I'm going to bet that. So I'm going to come in there. I'm going to laugh when we come in there and shut that offense down. Shut come in there and shut that fucking defense down. And ride that fucking pony, bro. Ride it all the way to victory, bro. The oh, fuck, I ain't talking about week one victory, man. Motherfucker, if anybody's going to be the one to know, also, baby. And I ain't talking because I'm Super Bowl champion. I'm just talking about because you got some fluke ass football team or a fluke ass quarterback who thinks the. Uh, all-star of the league. Like, he had a great season a couple years back, man. I, Peyton, great football player. I don't hate him. I'm almost tired of hearing about these Donkey fans running their mouth, but we get them. We get them week one, man. We get them week one. Uh, I don't know how many Broncos fans are on here, but we get them. Uh, you know, I got confidence in this football team, man. I got confidence straight up. We're going we gonna to prevail, man. Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Um, talking heat, man. Talking uh, some good times, man. Straight up. It's Boy Joe. We're going to raise our line. Peace